at one point, I thought being a senior developer meaning knowing absolutely everything about a programming language, but that's not exactly it. So in this video, let's actually talk about what you need to know to be a senior developer. You might be in this position right now. You might be at a level and you're trying to get to the next one and you're not exactly sure why it hasn't happened. The honest truth is I've met too many people who are way too caught up in trying to master Python, Java, Golang, whatever their programming language is. That is just a piece of being a really good software developer. So do software engineers know everything about their programming language? The quick answer is no, but there is a little nuance to this response because we're really counting on you to know good computer science software engineering practices. Now, this usually comes with the expectation that some programming language, you've already been a junior, at least a mid-level, to get to at least a mid-level point, you have to have done something. But what I'm counting on from a senior perspective is you to be a professional, you to be able to take on projects, whether the programming language or not. Now, usually companies are going to hire you in knowing your skill set and they're not going to set you up for failure. But what's really cool about the IT industry is there is a lot of opportunity to learn and there's a lot of cross pollination and there's a lot of the different people who get to do different things depending on your situation. How do seniors approach a new coding task? And to me, it really comes down to team comprehension. Your code is more or less telling a story. So whatever team you're joining, you are going to be reading code and you hope you understand it and you are also going to be writing code and you want to write code that not only makes a future version of yourself happy but also easy for your teammate and we all have probably worked with somebody who have written poor code and like one of the things you can do as a senior engineer is really follow best practices right clean code if you can do it right now do it right now if you can name it correctly the first time name it correctly the first time but comprehension readability that piece is probably one of the most important aspects of contributing to a team at a senior level where juniors and intermediate people might be skipping on that part. And that's usually why we have the code review process, where have people review others' code, even at the senior level. But the point of it a lot of the times is to get kids, sorry, is to get younger professionals more feedback so they can write and improve their coding. Because a lot of it does come down to time and experience and more hands on keyboards you have the better you're most likely going to be at it. So you might be wondering, what are some things some senior engineers do that most people don't really talk about? And I think one of them is they reduce interruptions. Now, a not senior engineer, they will write code. Like we just talked about the importance of comprehension. Bad code will be written in a way that will cause disruptions. Disruptions means people are running into a task that they can't complete, they don't understand. Then they are, they are now spending time reaching out to whoever wrote the bad code, trying to understand it. It starts becoming this compound effect of unorganized, inefficient, and sometimes just a waste of time when it could have been done right the first time. So planning your code is very important. If we're not talking about planning your code, then at least collaborating with your team. Because the one thing that we really don't see anymore are like people going in silos. It does happen occasionally, depending on where you work. But we really like to have teams that are collaborative, working together, people understanding, contributing, reviewing code. There's no one just sitting in a corner doing their own thing, coming out six months later with who knows what. So that is something senior engineers, I think, do that no one really talks about is they reduce the disruptions and they're also like not being asked to do these things. They're doing it on their own accord. Okay, so I wanna leave you with, and I would say my final tip for people to become a senior developer and how actually they do it. When you're doing your estimates, always account for an unexpected. And here's what I mean. Coding, like we said, is only one part of the equation. That is the part you have control over, which is really nice because the computer does exactly what you want it to, except when it's being naughty. But people make it complicated. And again, you're in software. Software includes refactoring. Software includes documentation. Software includes planning with stakeholders, working with product and design, working with QA, working with the different folks and understanding the pipeline to 
go from designing, developing, delivering, and ultimately maintaining your code. That's a whole process. And then we never even talk about it, but you build something, you don't want to have suicide killed Justice League type results where it's hyped, it's put out, it looks good for the first week, and then it just is not what fans really wanted. And that is also a part of the business that, that we are a part of. So when you're planning your work, when you're in the next planning session, when you're ticketing, when you're working with your team on like, how do we break this stuff down? And we're saying, hey, it's gonna be about two sprints, four weeks, we're gonna be about six weeks, whatever it is, however you guys plan, just make sure your account for the unexpected. Think of the holidays. Think of, hey, is somebody expecting a baby? Is somebody going on vacation? Is there a big event? Is there a big training? You will be surprised. So many things can occur. If you're dependent on a vendor, senior devs are going to call these things out because they've gone through it. If you need legal, if you need some type of support, finance, senior devs, ask those questions sooner rather than later. If you like this tech content, you guys know what to do. Tech out habits that I think really helps people level up to become a senior developer. So number one would be completing your work before moving on. And here, hear me out. Most people, if you're in IT, you're probably working at some place that's looking at this agile, scrum, Kanban environment. So there's the artificial deadline. And there's this pressure to deliver because you don't just write code. You're working with software and software encapsulates documenting, refactoring, but also working within the business and businesses have deadlines because we're trying to make money. Remember, it's all tied into that ecosystem. What you can do as a professional is do everything in your power to not cut corners. If you can push back, it's better to be straightforward with your team and to be communicative than to say everything is all good and then come to them later when everything is actually not all good and things are on fire communicating early and, and doing everything in your power to complete your work in this entirety. And sometimes that's a challenge because we want people to complete work in these sprints and these cycles and however we want to find it at each org, but don't cut corners is what I'm trying to say. Tip number two would be enforce consistent coding standards. Now, this is actually the one piece I do think is very important when it comes to the code aspect is senior engineers are going to be the ones calling out all the BS. And if you're not doing that, we want to see you do that because it's not only showing that you're thinking critically of code, you're thinking critically of someone else's code. And this also shows that you're focusing on best practices. That's usually where you can get a lot of the inspiration of what to say in a PR request. So if you are the senior engineer, you're going to be the one, you see you commented out code, call it out. You see a bad function, call it out. If you're not really clear what is going on, ask the question, have the conversation in the thread. If you really need to have the offline meet in person, whatever. But enforcing those coding standards is usually a requirement that when you're starting it off you're just trying to figure it out by the time you're a senior you're the one trying to provide feedback to people and it demonstrates a level of expertise that you require now another tip for you guys is document documentation is so important i actually worked on a team where i kind of made i got made fun of because that's all i really focus on because our product was more or less complete but we had no documentation and we were actually onboarding a whole 10 developers and we had nothing to give them documentation is very important and i can't tell you how often people just gloss over this piece and i think there are the other there's another spectrum to this where people probably over engineer it and they document things don't really need to be documented or they don't really add a lot of value kind of like how i feel right now about ai sometimes i feel like it's contributing and sometimes i'm like we're the big ai revolution i'm still waiting guys but my opinion document it's your job that is what senior engineers do that you don't see a lot of junior engineers do senior engineers are usually the ones setting up the wikis creating the technical documentation updating diagrams and if you were to ask a senior dev how the ecosystem how the system design how the architecture of the whatever team the organization whatever it is that they work on they probably have some clue because they probably written some of the docs so if you're not doing that, start documenting more. Start commenting on other people's documentation, like we talked about, where we want to see you think critically on PRs. We want to see you think critically on people's documentation. Ooh, okay. And my last tip for you, really the one thing no one really talks to you about, but it happens in everyday life of a nine to five software developer, is always account for the unexpected 
when you're estimating. Now, one of the things you do as a senior dev and as a team usually are people going to ask you how long is it gonna, how long is it going to take to do your work? And you do everything in your power to give the best estimate. But remember, you're working in software. Coding is only one part of the equation. It's the one part you have control over. And it's nice because the computer does exactly what you want it to, unless it's being naughty. But for the most part, the hardest pieces are everything else because software includes refactoring, engineering, product, design, quality assurance, testing, everything in between. You have to design, develop, deliver, and then you have to maintain it. And that is not just one person. That's usually a team or a team with multiple people, or maybe it's multiple teams with multiple people. But either way, you're going to be asked to provide estimates. And like we were saying earlier, we live in this scrum, agile, combine. Hey, how do we align tech things with business things and make it all work? And sometimes they just bump heads. But an experienced engineer is going to consider, hey, if we're bringing on a vendor, did we get all the paperwork done? A senior engineer is going to think of, hey, if we're looking at a really big project, can we break this down? And the parts are we breaking down? Do we have dependencies? You know, they're going to ask a lot of upfront questions. That way they can really iron out what they have control over. So when you're doing estimates, really focus on what is it that I have control over? What pieces that I don't? Every time you introduce a piece you have no control over, just factor that in as if it's not going to happen. And then worst case, how long you think it would take for it to happen. To me, that is sometimes the most accurate way to cover yourself, but you also have to be fair. You don't want to say, hey, I think it will take the ice, the app store two years to approve my app. Probably ridiculous. So you have to use your judgment, but that's probably my advice is try to find ways to account for the unexpected when you're doing your estimate. But those, there's a lot of things we didn't cover, but to me, shifting from a junior dev to a senior dev isn't just about your programming language or your syntax. I think it really comes down to the standard and not just a standard of how you write code, but kind of the standard you hold for yourself. And usually by the time you're operating at a senior level, you're the one trying to set the precedent. So hopefully do what you can to do that. Now, if you're in a position right now where you feel like, I'm not really doing these things, Caleb, how could I do it? I would say take one of the pieces of the, take one of the pieces of advice be given today and just try to implement it over the next month. Do more PR reviews. Start speaking up on your standards. Start speaking up and talking about your estimations. There's so many things you can do in terms of baby steps. And if you want to know more, you guys know where to find me. And if you like this content, hit that like button. Follow for more. Tech out.